Greetings, uh, everybody. Welcome to Python APAC. So our talk today is your your media class machine. And uh, well, welcome once more. I I am uh, from a country called Mauritius, which is a small island in the Indian Ocean. And uh, this is the logo of uh, of our Python user group. And uh, you can find more info about this here. And about me, I'm a Python developer for my own account. You can uh, have a look uh, after when the slides are shared. I'm also a Flask on organizing member and a member of the Flask community work group, and also a Shopio maintainer. So this talk is about Shopio, which is uh, a framework you can see built. Uh, on top of Floss, or oh, it's a Floss machine, another way of viewing it. So this is the version that uh, we use here. And uh, normally, the two most popular web frameworks are Floss and Django. And uh, you now have also Floss uh, uh, Fast API. And uh, well, uh, but uh, let's say you want to build uh, not API, but like a normal web framework. So you'd have to choose the, between Flask and, and Django, like everything set up and, and it's not like headless. And so normally, why do people go to Django, turn to Django? It's because that Django is, um, Efficient, you get started very quickly. One of the reasons why people choose, the, let's say, Rails is that Rails that you get started very quickly. You can set up things very quickly. Your 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 models, your set, your the structure, and everything. You just have to start coding. And Django is a bit like that. And also because Django is proven, tested, used by many companies to power many applications. It's very, it's quite old, but it's also very uh, mature, and also you can customize Django according to your to your, to your taste. Actually, you can you have a great, uh, a fantastic uh, uh, quantity of packages. If you go to Django packages, there are many many packages like uh, just uh, made for Django. And also because of scalability, you can have a huge project, but you break it down. You you it need continuous and well you don't need to change much except you just need to write more code actually over the years django in, in, uh, included many security features which uh, which is very useful actually and uh, like uh, they're not mandatory but over the years django developed some good practices uh, in terms of security and uh, well, you you have uh, even uh, even uh, you have different types. Normally, when you when you start a Django projects, normally from experience, you have very very few times you'd need to build entire components, each and every component for you from scratch. For example, you 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 want to commit, you want to have a commit system. So what you do, you go look if one exists, like uh, you just use it. So in that spirit, Django is great. Now, when you have Django, you might be wondering why people choose Floss. Well, for one, the learning curve is it's very quick to pick up. In 10 lines of code that you write, you can get started with a web server. Like you just write your code, you run that file, and you got your web server running, which is something amazing. Uh, like you just in install Flask, write some code, and you are good to go. And Flask also gets out of your way. I'm, I'm reading what I wrote because it's something really nice. It is a focal point. If you want to experience the joy of coding, it's something amazing that the framework doesn't that stop you from doing what you want, how you want, because at the end of the day, well, you must enjoy coding. Well, you can become more natural, you can understand why some regular 
best uh, practices that then you can always uh, vary the degree of pleasure you get for, from coding because it's set up the way you like. You just have to use some some plus functions, but it's really about the joy of coding. Like it's not only about product, also about the 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 joy you get when you program. And uh, well, again, plus doesn't uh, give you a, a like you have to do this like that. You have to find a better way. Well. It, and that also means that you 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 don't get kind of locked out. You choose this, and the next version of loss, well, uh, you're locked according to your structure, or a lock with this and that library. No, you choose your own batteries. And also, it offers a high degree of customization. You have several components that you're using in your app. Plus doesn't uh, exactly. Uh, fix you on this or that, so you're free to choose, free to customize, free to hack it to the core to build Django out of Plus if you if you wish. So Plus lets you do whatever you want. So while Django is present, no, uh, maybe not everybody needs everything that Django provides. Some people have better way to organize things, so they choose plus one again. As at the end of the slides, I will show it is something really great. So what the need for while Django exists, so the need for plus is there. Well, uh, the point of the talk uh, is what if you can use plus to have Django advantages? You can use plus, but still get the organization of Django, the migrate uh, mechanism of Django, the admin panel of Django. Well, well, in plus you have extensions for everything. But what if you could have a project that uh, actually encompasses those things? And I should include without getting in your way, because if you build another framework on top of plus and you give with users Django advantages, but you lock them in uh, with choices that they did not make. So that would defeat the spirit of plus and you could as well use another framework. That's what the, the, the talk is about. It's about uh, shop you. Uh, so that, uh, that's what we are. We will discover what is shop you. So a Shopio project can be thought of as an app which is powered by a series of modules. The modular spirit, the modular philosophy is quite uh, pronounced in here. And uh, like uh, you are using Flask, but why use uh, Shopio? You, you have Flask, but uh, why use Shopio? It's because it gives you modules to use with Flask. Since it, it's built on Plus, of course, we can always rewrite it from scratch, rewrite it, but it just saves you time. And it gives Plus users superpowers, superpowers not ex which doesn't exist actually in Plus land. And you have organization of your steps because at, at some point after delivering several Plus projects, big Plus projects, you start to identify a pattern. But what, what if you could start with that pattern without investing years of loss coding? So that's why Shopio exists. And also it's feature pack features are, are always being added as we get ourselves more experience and as people contribute, as it's being tested. So uh, with Shopio, you have migration, migrations, assets management, and modules integration. Like, have those, but you don't have to use those, but you have them. You you have them, so uh, and also docs and tests when you when you when you start a new shop your project, so you get your docs docs and you get your tests already set up. And uh, Shopio normally it uh, it's magic. How it accomplishes things are uh, currently still in the clear. You can inspect the app.py and you see how, like, I can say 75% of the magic is being done. And uh, what does a Shopio project look like? Well, this is it. 
you have modules, you have the email sending mechanism, you have the secrets management, the config profiles like testing, production, development. You have your modules, you have your test pictures by test by default is included. You, you, you have your Sphinx uh, docs, uh, you have your theme, Sphinx theme, and things like that. Uh, well, this is very advanced. It is not for everybody, but you must know when exactly to use it, whether or not it will make sense for you to, to actually use ShopView. But uh, it's a powerful and it's designed for big projects. If you want to tackle big projects in class with, with uh, Django says tight deadline, and I can say, well, tight deadlines, but quickly, like, not much fatigue, not to meet deadline, but you know, just uh, just uh, lazily throw your way around, and other people don't get lost. Other people, and you also one advantage of using Shopio is that across several projects you can reshare module posts, but also you have a structure that people can relate to. And yes, I know it might it might look intimidating. But that's what a shop your project looks like. So you have your 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 instance actually with uh, a class protocol for ignoring your secrets. But uh, of course, it must be ignored in your Git in your as well, which GitHub the GitHub does uh, by default. But you also have module. You have um, you have uh, boxes boxes which allows you to group modules together, which is a feature not available in Django. But uh, these you get by default. And I think it's good because you also get to know how to write modules. It's a practical example. You, you know how to write fixtures to test things. You also get uh, in conf test some available fixtures. You see how it's being used in box default. So you have a concrete and complete practical example. Well, a module has several components which we'll explore. You have your static where, of course, you, you put your assets, you have the templates, tests, view, models, forms, upload, upload, which is used for DB seeding and info. Info.json is used uh, to fill in some details if in inbox before you, you also, it also ship with a dashboard module, which you can, you can like have every module listed up here uh, on the dashboard that you can use, but uh, if you are not going to use that dashboard, so don't worry much about it. But on, on creating a module, all these files are created for you. And if you go to the OTAN point, like we were creating from, from scratch, the OTAN board would already work. And the big point about that is that you don't need to write uh, blueprints. You don't need to write blueprints, blueprints manually. Don't need to register blueprints, so it's done for you. So that's how you get started. Um, new with a new command, so that's how you get started, and then you run. You run. It's uh, it, it can be confused uh, with Django, but uh, be sure that uh, it's it's not Django. It's hard uh, class. It's a class project. But you you see that uh, we actually uh, kind of derive Django from from another environment. And uh, well, uh, you have also have the run debug. You also have the run server. That's just for trolling, some, something like that, just you know, to show that you can implement the same command. And uh, of course, you have the initialize uh, command, which initializes the app. You have collect static if you want to group all your modules asset into one asset and use for production without changing your URL. So that's it. Uh, collect asset you as collect uh, static you only need in production for test for development. No need to, to do that actually. And uh, that is uh, how you you also it also you also get the get static um, function that you can use to actually refer to your to the URL of your files. And uh, you have the migrate and upgrade command. Like you don't need to uh, use plus migrate to integrate plus migrate. Everything is integrated. You just to use it. And if you are using plus projects, building for plus projects one after the other, 
Normally, these are the commands that you you need. You won't need much, but those are the commands that you need. And I can say that if you use Alambic, if you, you have the Alambic core, maybe we could do much more in terms of modular migrations that is on our roadmap, that is on our test list. And uh, we're making sure to actually include it. It's upcoming. And uh, now, when presenting any framework, people ask, is it reliable? Like, well, we don't use, we don't maintain any middleware. For authentication, we use class login. We have class admin, class migrate, WTF for forms, SQL, Al SQL Alchemy, and class mailman, which is a port of, which is a port of Django's uh, mailing uh, mechanism to class. And I can say that those um, plugins have been very stable, have been, is, uh, they are maintained up to now and uh, they are great packages they are they are foundation packages packages that uh, don't go wrong for a long time in fact uh, they are great packages if you know what i'm talking about like now one question i get a lot like okay you have a plus framework which gives you general advantages and some so some more steps but what, why not just use Django? Well, then say it's just flaws. What do I mean by that? Is, uh, for example, let's take the, the case of Pinterest. It uh, begins with uh, someone asking, uh, like, in a talk somewhere, or I don't know, I, I forgot actually where he found, where he, where the Pinterest employee named Paul mentioned heavily modified Django. So he was uh, thinking, this uh, person who is the first uh, employee of Pinterest and was asking him, like Pinterest started with Django, but what do you mean by heavily modified Django? What do you mean by that? So he was replying that they started using Django. He was the first employee knowing Django. They went for that and it's great. Uh, but, uh, but when you when you hit a certain scale, you want to, because even Django, the structure that it provides, it's according to the insights of the developers, according to the, the level they reach, according to the maturity that, that, that they have. But what if people, users, went beyond that? How do they cater for that? So you have to... Maybe they have some more insights. They want to work things. They want to change things. Though Django is very modular on one hand, but on the other hand, according to the, the choices it's made is cemented in concrete. So what, what they are going to do, so like you'd have to fork it and break things and experiment, which is, not, which is a not very clean way of doing things. So, uh, so they had to to fork, and uh, what 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 do you do? They mean by fork? Yes, that's exactly what they did. They fork. They they did their own things, but I knew that it wasn't going to 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 work because it's a lot of work, and maybe you have ten people. The Django team has I don't know many people maintaining, and obviously you're going to hit some road blocks. But by the end of 2012, they moved. Okay, what did they choose? The answer is, guess what? Uh, we built a homegrown framework on top of class. Okay, so, and that's what Propio is. It's a public attempt, went beyond all attempts that existed today to class users superpowers to empower class users, which it goes beyond. Normally, the closest you, you get to shop here was a Flask Diamond, I think, which implemented Django functionalities into Flask, but it was yet another framework that you had to deal with. But Shopio keeps its magic as transparent as possible. And uh, you can have a look at the source code, actually, to, to know. Uh, what uh, and uh, normally okay 
And uh, what I what what I can say is that this year we used Shopio to build a conference software for Flowstone, and I've been using it uh, many times. But uh, for my personal project, but this one is the first time that uh, a Shopio project is being used like uh, quite in the limelight, and I can say it's working. We deployed it, and sure. Shopio it's very reliable, but our on our own, and we are working on more features, etc., to make it better. And feel free to to ping me. Feel free to to go to flosscon slash traveler on GitHub, and you can have a look at this, the conference software this year. And hope you enjoy this presentation.